Hello everyone, I am Left, and today I want to make you guys a video about just some general 5v5 tips, some 5v5 etiquette, all things 5v5 in update 3.0, and yeah, it's been a while since I last made a video, and for that I'm sorry. I've been really busy with school recently, you guys, as you guys know, I'm in college, and I had a lot of things going on. Also, Nova just competed in the Celsior Esports tournament, the first 5v5 tournament in, I think, all of Vainglory, actually. So that was pretty busy stuff, and yeah, I've just not been able to get around to making a video, so that's what I am doing today. So, to start this video off, I want to go over some, just a few little... 5v5 etiquette tips. Not very many people are great at 5v5 yet, and it shows in the casual queue. So, this first tip of, I mean, you can call it a tip, or you can call it a complaint. Support. This one's for the supports. Do not tank, or do not take ambient gold at level 1. Stay in the river looking for invasions, and let your damage heroes reach level 2 together. So, yeah, since there's 5 people, on your team if the support is there for the ambient gold on either of the buff camps then your damage heroes are not going to reach level two if the support is not there for that ambient gold and xp your jungler your top laner your mid laner your bot laner they will all reach level two and that is the desired outcome of your level one rotation jungler do not take your laners buff camp early game unless you are going to gank and kill his laning opponent an enemy laner with the red buff will almost always kill your your allied laner without the red buff. So, this one should be self-explanatory. If you're going to take the red buff, do something with it. The red buff is very, very, very important in the early game. And if the enemy laner has it and your laner doesn't because you decided to take it and then go take the gold treant, uh, yeah, that's a mistake. Side laners. Do not take your jungler's heal camps unless you have no flask and really need to defend your turret. Usually the jungler needs those for XP, but you can take them if you really need them. This one is situational. In a coordinated team, your jungler won't get that mad at you for taking the heal camps, especially if you need it to defend a turret, but don't just take them all the time for no reason. That's just dumb. Lastly, this one's for everyone. The red buff is in bot lane, obviously, and the blue buff is in top lane. To fully optimize your comp, put a weapon laner in bot and a CP laner in top. So a comp that plays around the buff camps correctly would be something like this. You maybe put a, a Celeste in mid lane, a Lorelei in top lane, a Kroll in jungle, and a Gwen in bot lane. You have the Kroll and the Gwen on the side of the red buff. You have the Celeste and the Lorelei on the side of the blue buff, and they can respectively get those buffs and they are optimized because the blue heroes have the blue buffs and the red heroes have the red buff so next i want to talk about some of the 3.0 changes i'm sure a lot of other content creators have already covered this everyone seems to be growing at a faster rate than myself because they actually make videos um regularly but anyways after 3.0 saw and kashka are no longer the monsters they were before there's no need to keep playing around them and i see some people still playing around them in casual samuel Gwen, Celeste, Grumpjaw, Varya, and Arden, as a jungler Arden, are actually all really strong picks in 5v5, stronger than they were before. So I want to talk a little bit about them each before we end the video here. Samuel is a lot better now. He gets so much more space to work on Sovereign's Rise with his Drifting Dark. You can cast it at so many different more you can cast it at so many different angles. Um, he's got more heroes to splash off of, more heroes to sleep. And he also really benefits from the new Dragon's Eye, which now goes up to, I think, 18 stacks of Crystal Buff. So, yeah, the new Dragon's Eye benefits Samuel a lot, and he's been seeing a lot of competitive play in scrims. I really recommend you trying him out in one of the lanes. Gwen got a range buff, a buff to her boomstick perk, and a buff to her alt range. First of all, I just want to say that Gwen's alt range is, like, not human right now, and I feel like it's gonna get nerfed soon. Like, Ace's High is not supposed to be global, guys. I'm I'm not sure what they were thinking there, but I, it is fun. So, with the buff to her boomstick, Tension Bow, or Sorrow Blade Tension Bow Gwen can kind of come back into the meta a little bit. Now that she got that range buff, she can 1v1 down a Ringo once she hits that power spike with the Tension Bow. 
So if you haven't been trying Gwen in the bot lane, um, go for it. It's really fun. Grumpjaw got a buff to his ult, and this makes him a force in the jungle, honestly. I was talking to Delphi, talking about um, what he thinks are the strongest heroes in the jungle right now. The first two things he listed were Kroll and Grumpjaw. He loves playing Grumpjaw, and I think you should love playing Grumpjaw too. He's got so much more utility now, but be careful though. If you don't want, if you want to play multiple bruisers on your team, like Grumpjaw and then like maybe a Rona in bot lane, then you're going to have to snowball. If you have too many bruisers on your team, your power arc is like really slanted down towards the end of the game, and it becomes harder and harder and harder to finish if you have more and more bruisers on your team. Because if they stack their team with kiting heroes, your bruisers aren't just going to be able to kill all of them at once late game. So be careful with how many melee warriors you have on your team. Celeste got more range. Um, I think that's really all there is to say. She's a lot stronger and a lot more fun now. Um, her stun range can feel a little bit ridiculous in the early game. But that's okay. She's still Celeste. She's still squishy. She really benefits them from the new dragon's eye. Varia, lastly, she got a buff to her chain lightning perk, and she also benefits from the new dragon's eye. Her ult also got a crystal power increase. So that's kind of going to be it for this video, but at the end, I want to give you guys an update on myself and on Nova. If you guys didn't know already, I'm sure you know already, but I am the coach of Nova's Vainglory team in the Vainglory 8. So I want to be the first to give you guys this update that I mean, if you're not on Twitter, you wouldn't have seen this, but starting all over has joined our team as a substitute player. Um, we're all really excited to have him, and I can't wait for the preseason. We've got scrims beginning soon, and yeah, get on Twitter, follow me, follow Nova if you want more updates about the team. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.